envision a world where every pharmacist is free to fulfill their role as community health care providers. That's why we are so excited to launch Pharmacy Fulfillment by IA, the future of Pharmacy Fulfilled. Good afternoon, my name is Nigel Maynard. I am the Editorial Director of Drugstore News and welcome back to our ongoing series where we talk to thought leaders in the retail pharmacy space. Our guest today is Dan Necht, who is the Vice President of Clinical Product at CVS Health. Good afternoon, Dan. Nigel, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Can you briefly tell us what your role is at CVS Health as the clinical VP of clinical product? Yeah, absolutely. So I work with a number of stakeholders around the company to develop innovative new products that improve the health and uh, wellness and well-being of our patients, customers, and communities we serve. So we're thinking about how we can pull together all the uh, tremendous capabilities of CVS and Aetna in, a, uh, in an innovative way that ultimately uh, better serves our customers. Okay, so can you give us a brief history of CVS Health's virtual care program? Yeah, absolutely. So, I, you know, as we all know, this past year has been um, a tremendous um, a challenge, I think, to society and the healthcare system writ large. And so, you know, what we've been doing is thinking about how we can uh, develop and deploy new and existing uh, virtual care assets with our brick and mortar capabilities to provide a, a hybrid experience for our members. I think most uh, specifically, if you think about Minute Clinic, um, we have a number of minute clinics around the country, but when the pandemic hit, uh, the team um, huddled and said to themselves, how do we deploy virtual care capabilities to serve our, our patients? And so back in um, April of 2020, the minute clinic team launched eClinic, which is an asynchronous telehealth uh, a platform that helps you know, patients get uh, care uh, during the pandemic. And we continue to build off of that, that, that program. So what has been the what has been your experience with virtual care and how has it grown before the pandemic and now, well, kind of still during, uh, I was gonna say after, but we're still yeah. in it, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, there's this old adage, I think it's, it's the uh, necessity is the mother of invention, right? And uh, when the pandemic hit last year, um, you know, we were, our patients and uh, customers were facing challenges getting access to providers and physicians. And so um, what we've seen is that virtual care has really stepped into the fore and, and provided uh, really life-saving access to uh, patients across the country, right? We at CVS have seen, I think about a 600% increase in utilization of, of telehealth services at the, at the, you know, the beginning of the pandemic. Um, th that number has since uh, declined pretty substantially, but certainly utilization uh, is still way above what we saw pre-pandemic. Um, and so, you know, telehealth has been really uh, critical for uh, patients to access uh, healthcare. And I think, uh, you know, certain specialties are um, sort of better suited for telehealth. I think that you know the poster child is is uh, behavioral health and mental health services, um, where we've seen continued substantial utilization after that initial peak, um, whereas we've seen sort of drop off, as I said earlier. Yeah. So, do you think virtual health uh, or virtual care is going to be a bigger part of healthcare overall come in the coming years? Uh, absolutely. We definitely uh, think virtual care is here to stay uh, in the U.S. healthcare system. Uh, but I, I'd say the future is here, but it's not e evenly distributed. As I mentioned, mental health, big um, continued utilization of telehealth, whereas some other subspecialties are probably better, uh, you know, better left to an in-person encounter. So whenever a, a physician or a nurse practitioner needs to do a physical exam or provide tests or a vaccination, certainly, you know, you need to have that in-person encounter. I think also patients really benefit from that, you know, a longitudinal trusted relationship with, with uh, healthcare professionals. And so we definitely see, uh, you know, patients really enjoying that. Um, one interesting statistic we saw come out of our uh, healthcare insights study last year was around sort of the generational variations of embracing virtual health. But unsurprisingly, we've seen like millennials and um, sort of folks on the younger 
uh, end of the age spectrum really lean in more to virtual care, whereas um, in the Medicare population really um, appreciates that in-person experience with the primary care um, mm -hmm. practitioner or specialist. Yeah, well, since that's a large part of your customer base, let's say by 2030, it will be age groups now that are considered millennials, I guess. There'll be 79 million of them. What will virtual care look like, say, five, 10 years? Um, yeah, I think the future of virtual health is more of that hybrid model I alluded to earlier. So certain encounters are um, well suited for, uh, you know, in a video encounter, whereas other sort of experiences are be better left to brick and mortar. So I think about CVS and that 9,900 some on pharmacies, we're working to uh, enhance the experience of the pharmacist and the patient at the at the um, point of pickup for a prescription. So serving mm -hmm. up uh, rec uh, care recommendations and individualized insights, clinical insights to patients. We feel that our pharmacists are really well suited to do that work. Um, I also think about our mental health uh, counseling program at a number of our health hubs where it's a hybrid model. Uh, patients can come in into the health hub and interact face-to-face -face with a licensed clinical social worker for um, screening, triage, counseling, um, support around be behavioral health issues, but also there's an option to engage with us completely virtually through the screen as well. So, um, you know, the future is going to be a hybrid uh, model, and I think companies like CVS that have both a really robust brick and mortar presence, but are able to tie the experience seamlessly to virtual, it's going to be really sort of leading the leading the charge. Yeah. So the one thing that occurs to me is that with virtual care and with a lot of pickup and delivery services or curbside pickup, um, what impact will that have not only on CVS Health, but with it, within the retail pharmacy industry, what, will that, what kind of effect will that have on the front end of the business since folks aren't necessarily coming into your brick and mortar locations? Um, it's a great question. And I would say what we're doing at CVS and through our health hubs is bringing more and more uh, health services into the health hubs. So for example, um, we're providing nutrition, counseling, and coaching in a number of our health hubs in Phoenix. So folks can come in and engage with our registered dietitian face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, but also get biometrics at our minute clinic to determining so A1C or lipids. Um, they can interact with um, the, the uh, care concierge to, to select the right products to help um, on their path to some better nutrition and better health. So I think we're, we're bringing in new services, but also new products um, to make the experience at a health hub at CVS a lot more experiential and impactful. I just think about our sleep apnea um, a, um, product suite uh, at health hub so people can get screened for uh, sleep apnea in the minute clinic, um, but then they can select the appropriate uh, equipment to help them um, with sleep apnea at the front of the store. So I think blending both services and products together in a really um, seamless way is gonna be um, sort of the future. Yeah. Are there other types of services that might be suited to virtual care? And you mentioned mental health, which is a good one. Um, and I, I've seen the, the data about usage being up. But I wonder, um, is the industry exploring other services that they can add to that? Um, I, I think a lot of subspecialties are fairly well suited for virtual care as well. So I just think about so your um, management of, of uh, chronic conditions, so uh, uh, hypertension, for example. The, the majority of, uh, of Americans, uh, adult Americans, are living with hypertension, and, and sadly, probably more than 50% are not at their goal. So finding ways to better manage chronic conditions in the palm of your hand or at home um, is really exciting. I, I mean, for another example is just you know, remote patient monitoring or remote, remote clinical care for congestive heart failure. We have a program where we send uh, cellular enabled scales to folks living with congestive heart failure, as well as an iPad with special software. And the I idea there is to empower uh, these patients with heart failure to better, you know, manage their own conditions at home. And if, you know, if their issues start to bubble up, uh, the patient can interact with a care manager on her iPad or a telephonically 
um, to get sort of better insights and perhaps medication adherence or nutrition support, um, or if symptoms sort of get out of control, patients are uh, more willing to engage with the healthcare system earlier rather than resulting in a hospitalization or an ICU stay. Yeah, I caught a tail end of an interview recently on some station on the radio, and they were talking to a healthcare official, I don't know if it's a state official or government official, and someone brought up the idea of having sort of like a mobile clinic, sort of like a mobile CVS Health to go into underserved neighborhoods to provide some of those very services that you're talking about. Is that something that CVS could explore in the future? And is there viability for something like that? Uh, there's definitely an appetite and excitement of trying to bring care as close to the community as possible. And so, you know, we already have that, that 9,000 uh, stores available, but I think pushing it further. So whether it be a mobile van could be really exciting or just, a, you know, a mobile phone, right? A lot of care can be delivered uh, right in the palm of your hand, I think is really exciting. Another area which is tremendously exciting is around, you know, engaging community partners, whether they be uh, churches or, you know, barber shops. We've seen just great evidence around um, empowering uh, barbers in um, communities of color to engage patrons around uh, hypertension screening or screening for prostate cancer. So I think ultimately, you know, it takes a community uh, to really um, elevate the, the importance and access to good health care. Yeah. So before we let you go, is there anything else that our viewers and audience should know about what CVS Health is doing within this realm? Well, yeah, we have a lot of exciting work underway, but I would say, uh, you know, our minute clinics, I'd like to say, are our best kept secret. Um, and that's probably not a good thing because our minute clinics, uh, you know, provide um, uh, accessible, low cost, high quality care around both acute conditions like a cough or upper respiratory tract infection, but also helping manage hypertension or diabetes, which, you know, uh, as, as, as you all know, um, most people struggle with those chronic conditions. So, you know, Minute Clinic is poised and ready to support chronic conditions, but also partner with, with local providers in the community to help close gaps of care. So um, I think just sort of uh, giving a nod to the Minute Clinic in, in terms of that sort of high quality um, accessible care, I think it's important to, to raise that awareness. Great, well, thank you. That's very exciting stuff, Dan. Dan, next, thank you very much, CBS Health. Thanks, Nigel. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.